Hello, welcome to One Step at a Time, transforming three lockstep courses to the alternative textbook format. Um, we have captioning available. Please click on the live captioning link. Let me introduce our two speakers. Dr. Agnes DeFranco has served as the Associate Dean and Interim Dean of the Conrad N. Hilton College of Hotel and Restaurant Management and the Associate Vice President of Undergraduate Studies for the University of Houston. In addition to her six textbooks and 120 plus referred articles, she also has numerous non-referred publications, book chapters, and invited presentations. Arlene Ramirez, is an instructional assistant professor at the Hilton College of Hotel and Restaurant Management at the University of Houston, teaching courses in finance, hotel operation, and hotel development. Arlene holds a BBA in accounting from the University of Texas at Austin and an MBA and, in, and is an ED the candidate in instructional systems design and technology at Sam Houston State University. So I'd like to welcome you to begin your presentation. Thank you. Good afternoon. And thank you for sharing your time with us today. Agnes and I are both, as you heard, professors at the Hilton College of Hotel and Restaurant Management at the University of Houston. Our college is actually a hotel. And in this rendering here, this is our new hotel expansion, which should be completed by 2023. So we will be teaching in this facility relatively soon. Our students not only take courses on how to run hotels, restaurants, spas, or country clubs, but part of running these hotels and country clubs and restaurants is doing business. And that involves understanding the numbers. And our curriculum has four required courses to help them do just that. Which brings us to today's topic of transforming, transforming three lockstep courses to the alternative textbook format. Today, we will share with you why we adopted this alternative format, the process to get the courses in that format, and the feedback that we used in our quest for continual improvement. We want our courses to be the best and provide our students the best experience. We hope that at the end, we will have some time to hear your comments or answer any questions you might have. So our story begins with a normal day at the Hilton College. I was reading my emails and noticed that the university was offering grants to encourage faculty to use the Open Education Resources or OER. So in looking at that, I approached Agnes and I asked her, you know, what do you think about doing this? I'm gonna do it for one of my classes. And so as we kept talking about it, Agnes said, why don't we do all of the courses in the account, accounting finance track? So as we, we had just finished going through the courses and reviewing them to make sure the objectives were consistent from course to course. And so that every instructor that taught a specific course was sort of following the same template. We have a little bit of artistic liberty, but for the most part, the content needs to be the same. We both teach these courses on demand, depending on how many students are, are needed to take the courses during the different semesters. So we taught, we pretty much have taught all of the courses in that curriculum at some point or the other. So the first reason that we wanted to do the OER or attempt transforming to a non-text environment was for our students. We wanted to, to provide them the opportunity to learn in a what we thought would be a better environment with materials we thought were more relevant and also to save them money. They didn't have to buy a textbook. The other thing is that with textbooks, a lot of times you're sort of stuck with, and I don't wanna use the word stuck, but you're sort of committed to the organizational structure of the textbook. The students are following along and they expect sort of you to follow the same format and skipping chapters. Sometimes again, that goes back to spending money on textbooks that they didn't use. So it allowed us to use multiple resources. And then it allowed us to have some creativity to figure out the best way for the students to learn and to engage. And so we liked that aspect of it because as things change, especially with COVID, we were able to interject new things that were applicable to help the students understand how to deal with situations in that environment. And finally, it allowed us to find more engaging material. Everyone loves numbers, right? So a lot of people are really intimidated by them. So 
in order for us to really get the students to understand the material and want it to come to class, because remember, these are all required courses, we wanted to make the material really engaging. And that is exactly what OER allowed us to do. So the way we went about doing this is the process was to first list all the topics and organize them in a way that we observed best worked for the learner. And then we identified the materials that we wanted to include. We also created our own videos on our iPads, revised our PowerPoints to be more detailed and included lists of news articles that we felt were relevant for the courses. And then we started developing the courses, dividing the content into modules and putting all the pieces together. Our first course was well received by the students, especially because they didn't have to buy a textbook. However, it was still a bit rudimentary. We were happy, but we were observing that other instructors were doing some unique things in their classes. So we were challenged to do more. And due to the natural progression of the courses, the students were really liking the idea that when they took one of our courses, they didn't have to buy a book. So when the opportunity surfaced for us to apply for a second grant, we went ahead and did that and we did our managerial accounting class. And finally, this past spring, we were honored to be awarded a third grant and we finished doing the finance course as well. Because of our involvement in the OER grant program and us telling our faculty, fellow faculty members about it, one of the professors who actually teaches one of the other courses in this four course uh, portion of the curriculum, cost controls, also applied for a grant and redid that course as well. So over the last three years, we have learned how to not depend on a book, we also found more engaging ways and new technologies that some are free to use to enhance our courses. And another advantage um, that we have is that last fall, I started, as you heard, um, an a doctorate program in instructional systems design and technology. And in that program, I have been exposed to a lot of new artifacts that we can use in creating our courses and teaching them. So of course I get really excited about them and then I drag Agnes in and tell her, we've got to do this. So I'm gonna pass it on to Agnes now to talk a little bit about some of the other things we did with the courses. Well, so as Arlene said, after the first course was completed, we just caught the bug. We want to keep working and to find appropriate technologies to augment our modules. So we, we learned quite a bit from the first course and so we begin to investigate other options. And this is where I want you to, to stop and Arlene and I want to thank Ariana Santiago. She is our OER coordinator at the University of Houston and she is fantastic because she will email us and remind us and made us aware of all the resources and workshops available for us to learn new things. So technology for us used to be like PowerPoints and that's it. But now we learn something about other software that we can use to record and also edit our videos instead of just doing our, our, our iPad. And also other software that allowed us to be more engaging with the students by quizzing them with flip cards, sorting, multiple choice, true force, you know, all these other things. So after we finished our first grant, we learned about press books because Ariana put together this hands-on training session for us to learn what the product is all about. So here we have an example of the uh, press books product for you to see. Now, I'm sure you would not consider this as an award-winning sample product by any stretch of imagination. Not because of press books that is not good, but because Arlene and I is just learning how to use it. So we may be using only like 20% of it. So the bonus is that this was provided to us by the university at no cost. So let's go to where the contents is, because when you write the book, it has this big content, you know, table of content that you, you write. As soon as you write it, it will fill up for you. So here you see that these are all linked already to the modules, to the pages, everything is linked automatically. So if we scroll down to the next page to module 10, which is our last module on payroll, you can either click on the payroll word or the, um, the number, it will take you to where the front page of the new module is. And you see all these formatting are preset. All you need to do is to type in the title or the subtitles and all these background colors, lines, bolding are all preset for you. And if you don't like this look, no problem, just go and select another theme. But if you stay on this page, you will see that there is a word over time that is underlined in blue because Pressbooks also let you link outside information to here. 
So if you click on it, for instance, you will see that it will take you out to the US Department of Labor website and actually look at, over time, a bit more in detail. So let's go back to uh, Pressbook and see uh, Pressbooks and see what other things that they have. So when you scroll to the next page, you will see that there is um, these different levels of subheads. And again, they're all formatted. So we don't have to remember um, what font size that we use or what indent that we use and so on. It's all done. And scrolling down to the next page, you see an example of a payroll register. And all we did was that we cut and paste um, a screenshot of what we used on our slide and then just put it in here. And Pressbooks will highlight the example for you in a different color. So calling the attention um, of the students to the material. So now let's maybe go back about 20 pages and go to this one page and you will see another function of Pressbooks, which is called key takeaways and is in another color. So it offers you to highlight the important points that you want for your students to know. So these two, again, I actually cut and paste it from our slide deck that we use in class. So when students see this, hopefully they remember seeing this in class already, or if they're good and have read press books before coming to class that day, then when we talk about these topics, they will have a rough idea already. And as we mentioned, we did this during the summer to add to the first class after we finished the first grant and we're beginning working on the second grant. So yes, making classes textbook free and interactive is truly a continual process, but lots of fun. So now we're gonna talk about two other technologies that we used. We, we use Padlet and maybe some of you have used Padlet in the past. So what I have done with Padlet is I've incorporated it into the courses to help the students with maybe a topic that they need to focus on or that they know will be tested and maybe they're not strong in. All of this information is included in our PowerPoints. And when we get to Pressbooks again, we'll talk about that. All of this information is somewhere, but you know how students are sometimes they, they don't look or they forget. So this is a quick way for them to do it. And what I wanted to highlight here is that Padlet can be, we're gonna talk about another software that's a little pricier, but with Padlet you get uh, three Padlets for free. So you could play around with it to see if you like it. And it's relatively inexpensive. I believe it's about $140 or $190 to purchase for a whole year. And you can create, these are from my PowerPoints. And then I typed in some text. And then underneath I recorded like a 30 second, 20 second video that explains what this is. So the student can see visually how this all ties together. And then you can also add YouTube videos to it if you want. So what I did, this is all of my work. And then down here, it's my voice. But then I found a YouTube video that sort of encapsulated everything that I had said so that they can see that it's not just me telling them about it, but that somebody else is also saying the same thing, but maybe in a different way. So whatever works to get them to understand the concept. And this can be incorporated into a video. It can be put into Blackboard or Canvas, if that's your uh, learning management system. And I also use it in class to have the students, not in the ones that we redid, but in classes where it's more group focused, more project based for the students to use it to digitally represent their ideas of their presentation. And they really like it because they can load it up with whatever you want. You can do it like a timeline as well. And that allows you to maybe show a process. This starts first and you go to this and so on. And then the other thing that we, we found that was very helpful for us was we're not um, award-winning videologist um, by any means, but we wanted our videos to be very well done. And we also wanted the software that we used to be quite simple because we didn't want to spend a whole lot of time learning software. And I know sometimes that can be an issue as we're learning software, it takes us longer to do things. And sometimes it doesn't come out exactly like we would want it. So I'm gonna show you here a little bit, get to the right time here of what Screencast-O-Matic does. And so let me start there. And you can see, um, actually move it just a tad over here. So what in this, I use my PowerPoints and I video them. So I actually, have a script that I can record. And after I record the script, I go in and take pictures of the slides that I want. And then I put it all together. And then as I edit it, 
I notice, oh, I want to highlight this, or I want to make sure that they're aware of this particular number. Here's where they need to find it on this report so that they can go through and understand how to solve the problems themselves. And these are pretty simple software pieces to use. And you can use Screencast-O-Matic for free with some limitations, but for $50 a year, you get all of the different add-ons that they provide. You can add music, you can do videos within videos. It's actually quite a very powerful tool for a small amount of money and also for the ease of use because Agnes and I are all about making things simple. We do not want to try to spend hours upon hours trying to figure things out. And we learned this one in absolutely record time. Now Agnes is gonna take, give it back to her to talk about Articulate Lens. Well, so when we're working on the third class, the third grant last fall, the finance class, we were on a Blackboard virtual conference. So similar to a conference like this. So it was last November that we we're on that conference. And we saw some examples of, of Articulate Rise 360. And Arlene and I look at that, wow, it looks so good, so clean and so organized and so on. And in fact, Arlene told me that she just completed a project in her doctoral program using RISE 360. So she was been, she's been raving about it. And she goes, oh, we can learn that. And you know, she is much better than me in technology. So she has to kind of teach me a little bit on that too. So after we finished changing the third class into textbook three this last fall, we started learning RISE 360 a bit more and revised our very first class that you saw earlier using RISE 360. So here we have a slide to kind of show you the before and after. So on the left side is Blackboard. So many of you are familiar with Blackboard. On the left side is our old module three on Blackboard. I mean, it's, it's pretty organized, right? You've got course objectives, PowerPoint, videos, and all that. And down underneath, we, just, we didn't take a screen, screenshot of it, but we'll have the quizzes, whatever. So it's pretty good, but it's very plain. And it just doesn't, you know, no jazz, nothing. So over Christmas, we made the change. And you can see on the right that everything that is content related is now put into a content package using RISE 360. And Blackboard now only has the practice quizzes, the graded quizzes and exams. And all this was done using a free trial of RISE 360 because they give you a 60 day trial. And so you might go, well, that looks pretty much the same, but let's open the content package and that's what the students will see. So when you click on that content package, you see this, and you have the same outline. You have the objectives, the content is organized, but now you can organize into topics. But what is good is that when you click start course on, on the left sidebar, you see the content again, and you see the objectives now on the front and center. And when you select the content bar, sorry, the continue bar on the bottom, it takes you to the next module. And now we're in module 3A. And if you look on the left sidebar, it also shows you the progress that you're right there. So we always start with a little bit of a verbiage and then we we'll go to a video. And then the slides that accompany the video that they can download and take you know, notes and all that. And then some knowledge checks. And that's what we love about RISE 360. So we have a sorting exercise over here. And if it's correct, it will take it. If not, it will shake and I go, uh-uh, you're wrong. And then it will encourage you to keep on going. And if you go down a bit more, we have other exercises where you can do another video and so on. And now we've got one that's called flip parts. And you have the question on one end and you flip it and the answer is there. So it's more interactive, absolutely. So if we go on to the next one, the next module, you have the same thing. So the students will see the same thing, right? Verbiage, the main PowerPoint, the slides and so on. And if there's more things that we want to go through, but this is what I want to show you too, is what is called a scenario where RISE 360 has a number of characters of different age, gender, ethnicity, and there's also different backgrounds that you can choose. And this is a very simple scenario that I put together and just give them a question and they can click on continue and see the answer. And you can see her smile too, because like, hey, you got the answer correct. So it's a slightly different way of learning too. And of course, if you scroll down, you can see we add an extra information that they want and so on. So we'll skip. 3C right now and go directly to the practice exercises and solutions. And what we do is to make sure that students get enough exercises. So we have the exercise on one hand, solution on the other hand. And if a question is a little bit more involved, we also do a video 
so that when they go home after a class or they're taking a class online, you can always go back and see how the question is being done. We also want to always encourage them. So we add a sentence in the bottom and say, hey, you know, if you have any question, just get with us or get with the TA, we're here for you. And to end every module, we always have what's next as our ending, because we want to remind them to go back to Blackboard to do their practice quiz and to do their real quiz and so on. And of course we put food items there because we are the College of Town Restaurant Management, so we put food, but you can put whatever pictures that you want. And another thing good about RISE 360 is that the pictures are there already. You don't have to go out and find your pictures. It's all included in there. So as I said earlier, it has a 60 day trial. So you may want to give it a try, but really our students love this because there are things for them to do rather than just reading the ebook or reading PowerPoints. And so although the three grants are done and all the three classes are textbook free, Arlene and I are still working on the courses. Now, the first one, as you saw, we're pretty much done because we want to go back, still add Padlets in there to explain certain parts better. The second one, we have some videos, as you saw what Arlene showed you on Screencast-O-Matic, and we have some Padlets in there already. And some modules are also in RISE 360 already. So this summer, Arlene will do the heavy lifting on that course while I will work on the last course, the finance course, and put the class modules into RISE 360. And when we get to our Christmas break, we plan to enhance the finance class for, um, using Padlets to explain something better. So we'll work on press books later for the two classes because having better videos using Screencast-O-Matic and better explanations using Padlets and better interactive material using RISE 360 are our first priorities. So we hope when all these are done, all our three classes will be similar to our students. And with um, Articulate Rides, all those things that we talked about, the Padlet, the Screencast, um, all of that can be linked into that, as well as a Pressbook. So you can put hyperlinks into all of that. So as educators, we all know that surveying our students is important because we want to make sure that we are meeting the expectations and they are actually learning something. So what we wanted to do was identify whether or not the materials we were presenting were actually providing what the students needed. So we obviously can tell by grades whether someone is understanding the material and through the quizzes, but we wanted to get their feedback. So we did a survey in the middle of the semester asking various questions about what they liked, what they didn't like, if they felt that the textbook was, um, not having a textbook was good. And of course that was always a yes. They loved the fact that there was no textbook. And we also engaged the students directly. So we would approach them during class and we would ask them, so what do you think? Well, how do you like the course so far? Do you miss the textbook? What additional information do you need? And they're very honest and they would tell us, no, we love the course, we like the videos. We like the fact that after class, we can go back and listen to them and make sure that we understood the material. We, we like the, um, you know, what the ones that had seen the, the Articulate Rise have told us this has not been face-to-face, -face, but through uh, our online chats that they really like that. So it's, it's actually working quite well. And the university also, as part of the OER grant, does a survey for the students at the end of the semester, and the results have been very good. And again, we're saving a lot of money for our students. In part of our feedback is not only just from the students, but we are also looking at industry because at the end of the day, they are hiring our students and we wanted to make sure that they are getting in their product that we're delivering, which is our students, what they want and what they need for their businesses. And so that is something that OER allows us to do. If, if industry changes some of the things that they want, we can easily adjust our courses to make sure that that's implemented because we're not tied to a textbook. A textbook. So at the end of the day, is doing all of this worth it? It seems like a lot of work. It really isn't. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of you really sort of creating uh, something that's going to, to be a major impact in someone's life for a long time and making your students happy. And it makes you happier because it's your material and you can have a little bit of liberty in how you present it and what you think is best. And if it didn't quite work well one semester, you can always change it because there's no vested cost to the student that they have to purchase a test book and you can easily adapt as things change. And as I mentioned earlier with COVID, we were able to introduce topics that were relevant to the material we were discussing so that students could understand how to deal with those situations. So we would highly encourage all of you 
to move towards OER and a textbook less environment. So we appreciate your time and we if I don't know if we have time for comments or questions, but well, thank you. So thank much. you. Thank you both Arlene and Agnes. That was a great and really <laughs> jam packed um, presentation. A lot of good information. We are actually one minute over time, but um, there was one question were the these tools already provided to the university or did you have to get personal subscriptions for this project? The, the, press, as, yeah, press Agnes mentioned that uh, press books the university provided. Uh, the Padlet and the um, Articulate Rise, we use some of um, our funds. Some of it came from our OER funds that we received and from the grants because that's part of it is for you to use it for that. And, and some came from some other little projects that we had done um, that we received grant for supplies for, for the classroom. Okay, the go ahead. The expensive one, that one was $500, mm -hmm. $4.95. Um, Screencast-O-Matic was only $49.95. It is amazing, it's very easy to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks like a great resource. Well, thank you both so much for this presentation and thank you everyone for attending. Um, we will be sending out at the end of the program, um, at the end of the conference, we'll be sending out a survey. Um, so we ask you to please respond to that survey. And thank you and have a good conference. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Ursula. Yes, thank you, Ursula.